organic sweet potato, Japanese avocados, plantains. Acorn squash, delicata squash, grass-fed venison, Atlantic salmon, almond butter, stevia. Maple syrup and honey, avocado oil, ghee, sriracha sauce, and coconut aminos. Yogurt, almond milk, A2 casein protein, kimchi, sauerkraut, cottage cheese. There's so much to learn when yeah. it comes to nutrition, yeah. right? Like, just the big food companies will do everything they can to trick you on yeah. <laughs> buying this stuff that you don't want to buy, basically. Yeah, always read the labels. Yeah. No, no, exactly. Yeah, you hey, you too. Today, we're at one of my favorite grocery stores, Whole Foods right here, AKA Whole Paycheck, where they're gonna take all your money. I'm just kidding, you can shop on a budget at Whole Foods. So today I'm gonna show you how I shop for health, for, for performance, and hopefully it'll help you shop a little more mindfully and also help you shop to fit your fitness and lifestyle goals. All right, so coming into most grocery stores, Whole Foods here, we got the produce section, all of our fruits, all of our vegetables, really the best stuff we can buy when it comes to shopping for health. One of my rules when it comes to grocery store shopping is the more you kind of stick to the outside of the store, the better off you're gonna be. One, this is where I get most of my carbohydrate fuel from. So we got our organic sweet potatoes, Japanese sweet potatoes there, the purple ones. Big yams right here, I do a ton of yams. And so this right here is one of your best sources for complex carbohydrates and really good fuel source. So vegetable section, fresh produce section right here. If you're at a calorie deficit, we're trying to lose some weight. Vegetables are one of those foods that you can eat almost as much of you as you want and never go over your calories. So avocados, staple in my diet. Avocados, mostly fat, a little bit of protein, a little bit of carbohydrates. So these guys are one of the most nutritious foods you can get, definitely a super food. And avocados go good on everything. One of my favorite starches, one of my favorite complex carbohydrates are what are called plantains. So they look similar to our bananas right here. However, these guys are way starchier. They're higher in carbohydrates. Now we're getting into what I consider the most important nutrient for building muscle, for recovering and building body composition. We're getting into our protein sources here. So I spend a lot of time in this department um, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna take you through my favorite protein sources, what I eat the most of. So when it comes to protein, I try to do quite a bit of like wild game meat. So you can see here that we have grass-fed venison. Ooh, this is straight fire. Whole Foods doesn't carry this all the time. I bought six pounds the other day. So I'm gonna put this back, but very good protein content, high protein content. Um, it looks like they're currently out of the bison. I do a ton of ground bison as well. When you're looking at ground beef, when you're looking at venison, pork, all of our different proteins here, basically we wanna be looking at the fat content. All of our steaks here are gonna have a higher fat content than most of our lean ground beefs are. Um, I like to do ground meats that are 93% lean or above if possible. So on this venison here, we have 25 grams of protein and only 4.5 grams of fat. So that is very lean when we're talking ground meats and when it comes to protein sources. If we're looking at a ribeye steak and we check the back of this guy, this one's pretty small, but we have 19 grams of protein and 27 grams grams of total fat. So quite a bit more fat than protein in this cut of, cut of meat here. So when you are shopping for meats, check the nutritional value and make sure that 
it is the nutrition value you want when it comes to protein and fat ratios. So I love my seafood too. Amazing source of protein, amazing source of omega-3s, omega-6 fats, the best fats that we want to get in our diet. But what you want to watch out for is what's called Atlantic salmon, aka farm-raised fish. Friends do not let friends eat farm-raised fish, okay? Um, some of the most toxic stuff you will actually find. All of this stuff is dyed to make it look like it is beautiful. In reality, this meat would actually be like pure brown and you'd be disgusted if you cut that fish open. So I only eat wild caught seafood that is sourced very well and I'm really careful about that. Um, seafood, boom. All right, so we are gonna go down one aisle here. This is, ooh, this is one of my favorite aisles. So we have all of our nut butters right here, the good ones, the bad ones, and then we also got um, our pancake mixes, our flour mixes, all that good stuff. So when it comes to nut butters, I stay away from peanuts, I stay away from cashews. Yes, yeah, so peanuts and cashews are actually not, um, they're not a nut, okay? They're in the legume family, and a lot of people don't know this about cashews, but cashews are, they're insanely toxic. Like workers that pick cashews have to literally be in full suits. They don't get poisoning from the outsides of the seeds that they're picking. Um, so cashews cause gut problems in the majority of people. They just don't know it. Their lectin content is through the roof. So that's why I would stay away from cashews. Same type of thing with peanuts. Um, I found that I have reactions with peanuts, same with a lot of people, so I stick to almond butter. So when you're looking at almond butter, you just wanna make sure that all, is, all that's in here is organic dry roasted almonds, okay? A lot of these guys, for example, ah, here we go. So this one, dry roasted almonds, cream coconut, this is the big one, palm oil. So a lot of um, almond butters are gonna also have what's called palm oil in there. Um, palm oil is an oil that I try to stay away from as well, not just because of the health effects of it, but also you're just destroying rainforest anytime you're buying palm oil. So I don't like that, so watch out for the palm oil. We're in sweeteners kind of the sweetener section so one of my favorite things right here is stevia okay stevia stevia is an all-natural sweetener it is zero calories and it does not spike your blood sugar or your insulin level so i use stevia to sweeten a lot of my stuff i'll put it in my oatmeal i'll put it in smoothies um, put it in coffee just any of those natural things that we usually are putting sugar into we can use stevia for we are in the oil section, okay? So I'm gonna go through what oils I like to use and then what oils we should stay away from. So my favorite oil is gonna be avocado oil. Why I love avocado oil is because it has a ton of omega-6, omega-3 um, fats in it, so it's super healthy, but the main thing here is that it cooks at a super high heat without breaking down. So unlike coconut oil or extra virgin olive oil, just right here. So these two oils are also awesome oils to use with cooking if you're cooking at low temperatures, okay? But once you hit high heating temps with these oils, their chemical structure is gonna break down. We're gonna lose the nutritional value that we're getting out of these guys. And they're actually gonna turn sometimes into carcinogens. And so that's why when I cook, I use mostly avocado oil and occasionally I'll break it down into these guys if I'm cooking at low temps. Three oils to stay away from, sunflower seed oil, vegetable oil, and canola oil. These guys right here have a ton of really bad fats in us, the kind of fats that are gonna be clogging arteries and causing problems later on in life. So this is usually what restaurants are using to deep fry their foods, cook their foods in, and you do not wanna be using these when you're making your foods at home, so choose one of the other options. Another compound I like to cook with a ton is what is called ghee, also known as clarified butter. So what ghee is, is it is butter 
that has been sifted through in a process and it, the lactose is taken out of it. So this is basically lactose-free butter. You get all the benefits of butter, um, but if you have any lactose issues or dairy issues, you're not gonna have, the, you're not gonna have those issues with ghee. Two of my favorite sauces right here, sriracha sauce and coconut aminos. So coconut aminos are amino acids that are coming from coconuts, which are very low calories. This guy right here, one tablespoon, has 25 calories. I put coconut aminos and sriracha almost on everything. I'm a huge fan of yogurt. I mix this with a ton of different stuff. So when you're looking at the yogurt section, you're gonna find some yogurt that is 5% milk, some yogurt that is 0% milk. The more milk fat or percentage there is, the higher fat it's gonna be. So I like to choose a low fat yogurt, which is also um, either low in carbs or moderate in carbs, but high in protein. So this right here, the Fage 0% vanilla is one of my favorites. So three fourths cup, we have 120 calories, 13 grams of carbs, 16 grams of protein, zero grams of fat. So when it comes to drinking milk, I don't drink a lot of milk. I do drink a ton of almond milk and coconut milk. My very favorite is the Khalifa coconut almond milk, which has zero sugar added to it. This guy has 45 calories, four grams of fat, um, one gram of carbs, one gram of protein. So it is mostly fat, but for one cup, you only have 45 calories. So I mix this for all my smoothies and I drink quite a bit of it. I do do some dairy. However, when I do dairy, I try to make sure it is what is called A2 casein protein. So the difference between this and your regular milk right here, A2, A2 protein is produced by cows that usually are not in America. So if you look at all the black and white dairy cows, those cows produce what is, what, what is called A1 proteins, which is what upsets most people's gut and gives us intestinal problems. So most people think that the gut issues and the problems they're having from dairy is caused by lactose, but in reality, most of it is probably caused by the A1 protein that is in there. So if you switch to A2 milk, a lot of those gut issues and problems are probably gonna go away. Okay, so since we're talking a little bit about gut health, two of my favorite snacks and very gut friendly products right here, we have kimchi and we also have sauerkraut. Okay, so probiotics and prebiotics are two of the things that we can take to help create a healthy gut microbiome system. They're gonna be fighting off all the bacteria in there, making sure that our bacteria levels are balanced. And these are two foods that you can eat to help balance your gut microbiome and help you know, decrease gut issues you may be having. So I use kimchi on a lot of rice dishes. I'll throw it on top of tacos, put it on eggs. It goes really well with a lot of different stuff. Eggs are one of my favorite um, protein choices. I eat a ton of eggs. I'm super hippie when it comes to where my food comes from and how that food is raised. So I always go with the pasture raised, non-GMO, organic stuff if I can, because I know these chickens have been treated really well and I just feel good about it. One of my other very favorite high protein kind of snacks or meals that we can use is cottage cheese. You can find lactose free cottage cheese as well. I'm not seeing it today. I think they're sold out, but right here, I usually choose um, 2% fat cottage cheese are lower because we're getting a lower fat content of 2.5 grams and a protein content of 14 grams, carb content of three grams. So half cup of this has 14 grams of protein. If you're looking for a way to increase your protein, cottage cheese is a great way to do it. Throw in some fruit in there, even a little bit of maple syrup. Um, you can really spice it up and it goes good with a lot of stuff. Let's talk about cheese real quick. I usually stay away and don't do a whole lot of cheese. Like when we're talking about cheddar cheeses, kind of the American style of cheeses, I don't do those. What I will do is one of my favorites right here. This is called Buff. It is mozzarella cheese made from free range grass fed water buffalo, which is just straight gangster, dude. So um, <laughs> this is the bomb right here. I do this guy and then 
When it comes to cheese, I will do quite a bit of goat cheese in my salads. Goat cheese, cheeses made from other sources besides cows are gonna have a better reaction on most people's guts and they don't have the same lactose content that dairy products do. I think bread has a really bad reputation because it's just straight carbohydrates and most people are kind of scared of carbs, but I do eat a lot of bread for fuel. When I'm eating bread, I like to stay with sourdough bread because it goes through a fermentation process that actually takes out the gluten in the sourdough bread. So sourdough is one of the most gut friendly breads there is. What I really stay away from when it comes to bread is our whole grains and our, um, our multi-grain breads. Those have the most lectins in them and they actually cause the most gastrointestinal issues out of all the breads. So I stay with white bread or sourdough bread. Those are kind of my go-tos. Thank you for shopping with me today. I hope you enjoyed the tour. I hope you learned some stuff. Just kind of went through what's in my diet, um, what I eat on a daily basis, how I shop for the week for, for performance, to stay lean, and just overall health. So add some of those foods into your diet if you haven't tried them before. See how you feel, and um, yeah, let's, let's give it up for healthy eating.